The journey of a lifetime starts with the turning of a page. Rachel Anders. So many people tell us how important books are to our life. Read this, read that. Oh, you gotta read this. We have the stack of books, yet most of us don't really understand why we need to read them, which is exactly why in this week's episode of Master Talk, even if I'm not the biggest reader in the world, I'm going to teach you three lessons that I learned from reading that apply to every single presentation I've done in my life. Hi everyone, Brendan here from Master Talk on your go-to channel to mastering your talk. And today we're talking books. So let's go ahead and open the first page of our communication journey together. Number one, books remind us of the importance of detail in our presentations. The reason why so many of us say that books are better than the movies is because, well, there's so much more detail in the book. We have all of the right syllables, the nuances, the descriptions, so that our world gets completely immersed in the book. I'll give you an example. J.K. Rowling's series, Harry Potter, I'm sure all of us have read it, or at least heard of it. The reason why so many of us say that the book is better than the movie is because of those details. We can picture, we can imagine Hogwarts in our mind, down to the tile floors, to the granite walls. Every little detail and nuance can be pulled out of the book, which creates those amazing visuals in our mind. And then we have presentations where we don't put a lot of effort into them. We are, have a one or two day notice. We see it as a drag, as a dread. We come up there and we don't take it as seriously. What if we applied the same level of detail, the same level of presence, the same level of energy that JK did with the Harry Potter series and in books in our presentations? That's the magic that I got from books, is every time I read something, it's always a reminder of how detailed I can be in presentations, how much further I can take a visualization. So whenever I tell a personal story now, I don't just say, oh yeah, hey guys, um, yeah, so this happened to me yesterday, it was pretty cool, and uh, yeah, it was great. You know, it's not a great personal story. Instead, you could say something like, it was April 1st, 2007, and I just got off my first day on the job. So notice how there's a lot more detail there. It's a lot more interesting. And I encourage you to do the same. Add the level of details to your stories, your metaphors, your quotes, the next time you give a presentation and you'll allow others to immerse themselves into your ideas. Number two, highlight your presentation scripts in the same way you would highlight and take notes in your books. Out of everyone I've seen in the reader circuit, Bill Gates is the one who has fascinated me the most. And the reason is because not only does he read very quickly, he's known to write very long notes at the margin of each page. And the reason this is interesting is because even for someone like Bill Gates, he's still spending a lot of time analyzing every little nuance, every little detail in the way that he absorbs information. And I found that analogy to be particularly interesting, the context of presentations. And the reason is because most of us don't really take notes at the margin whenever we're writing scripts or speeches. And one thing I do with clients that you can use in your own presentations is I actually have them highlight words to display different technique. I'll give you an example. Let's say there's the word blue and I highlight that word in yellow Yellow means low vocal tones. So instead of having them just say blue, I have them say blue. And then if we change it to green, it would be blue, high vocal tones. So there's a level of detail there in the way that we're highlighting and annotating our presentation scripts. So bottom line is in the same way that Bill Gates annotates his books, we must spend the same amount of time annotating our presentations, especially the most important one in our lives. So spend some time to just write a few notes down. How do you want people to feel with this sentence? What do you want people to take away after you've gone to this part of the presentation? Read between the lines and also start writing between the lines for the best results. And finally, number three, books give us an opportunity 
to live somebody else's life for a short period of time. So cherish it and pay it forward. We live in such an amazing time in history where we have access to the most amount of information ever. We can listen to how hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of people have lived their lives so that we can learn from their wisdom. But here's the thing. Why did our mentors, why did our heroes invest so much time, years, decades, writing these novels for us to learn from? Because they wanted to pass down that knowledge to us. So yes, read those books and use those lessons and apply them back into your presentations, the ideas you want to share with the world. But don't forget the most important thing, which is the title of your own book. When it's your turn to write one, when it's your turn to say that I have an idea worth sharing, and maybe it's not even at the end of your life, maybe it's right now, what would you want the title of that book to be? What idea would you like to share with the world? Start reflecting on that idea. Because once you have a clear understanding of what you would like that to be, it'll be a lot easier for you to push yourself forward. To say, wait a second, I have something cool to share too. And that cool thing will require a lot of effort, a lot of tenacity, a lot of grit, a lot of detail, a lot of perseverance to make sure that when I share the information in the same way that Scott Harrison did or Gary Vaynerchuk did or Tony Robbins did, that it resonates in the same way that those stories resonated with me. So I'll leave you to figure out now, what would you like the title of your book to be? Good luck. As Rachel taught us at the beginning of this video, the journey of a lifetime starts with the turning of a page. And the reason that quote is so special is because it means two things. The first one is turning the first page and learning from other people's wisdom. And the other meaning is turning the first page in your own story. When will you write chapter one? When will you write the destiny of your life? And if you're able to write in the same excruciating details that everyone else has before us, only then will you be able to share in a way that truly moves other people to create change and impact in the world. As always, if you enjoyed this week's episode of Mass Talk, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel to see more videos like this. And if you know someone who knows how to read, send them this video so that they'll be one step closer to writing the first chapter of their life story. Take care, see you next time.